everyone, welcome back to another video within my Smart Chat series. I am so excited to be joined by the registered nutritionist, Rhiannon Lambert, Hi. who's a really good friend as well, so I'm so happy that you are here <laughs> on my sofa and we're going to be chatting all about nutrition. Yes. I've got so many questions to ask you. I thought you might do, I'm a bit <laughs> nervous, I hope I can help. No, I know you will, because whenever I ask you any kind of questions around nutrition, you just like blow my mind and I learn oh, so much, so okay. I'm really excited to have you here today. Well, here we go. So yeah, I, I'm obviously eating a plant-based diet, so yes. I would love to know kind of a lot about that, yeah. around vegan nutrition in terms of protein, things that we need to be conscious of. So okay. if you could just kind of let me know your thoughts firstly right. on the vegan diet. Um, a vegan diet can be a wonderful diet. I just want to put that out there because I think there's so many people wanting to try things. However, it's not so wonderful if you don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I know that you've shown me um, how to make a frittata out of tofu. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you know how to cook, mm -hmm. you know what nutrients to look out for, it can yeah. be absolutely incredible. So. I guess it would help if I gave you those first. Yeah, great. Okay. Yeah. So the key things to look for, first of all, would be where are you getting your vitamin D? Mm. Especially if, unfortunately for your lovely listeners, if they live in the UK or a darker climate in, let's say, autumn to springtime, yeah. they should be supplementing anyway, because you only really get vitamin D from animal products. Really? Okay. Apart from mushrooms. Oh, really? I know. Wow. So if you put the mushrooms, um, it's gills, isn't it? Gills yeah. up. Gills yeah. up in the sun, they absorb the vitamin D from the sun and then no you way. then eat that vitamin D. I never knew there that. You see, the first thing <laughs> that I learned already, and we've been talking for 30 seconds. Wow. Yeah, so we've okay. got vitamin D. I actually thought yeah. vitamin D you mainly got from the sun, so I thought everyone generally in the UK can be very deficient in vitamin D. Yeah. But yeah. is it especially if you're also vegan? Also, if you're vegan, because D, know that. most people get it if they eat dairy, let's say, so cheese. Right. Um, milk, you can get vitamin D in fish, especially mm -hmm. oily fish with bones and things like sardines. Right. Um, but you can get it fortified, so I know you're a big fan of oat milk. Yes, yeah. And lots of different plant-based milks will say fortified with vitamin D or extra vitamins and minerals added on the yeah. milk. So look out for that if you're right. buying okay. plant-based milk. That's a good point. Um, calcium, the second one. Yes. This is something I'm very yeah, conscious of because okay. I know it can be something we're very low in. Yeah, it's difficult, but I think overall, the more variety in a vegan diet you can get, the better. The more different types of veg, even almonds, nuts and seeds. So almonds are a good source of calcium. My yeah. favourite fruit in the world, figs. I love figs. Yes. They're great. Yes, me too. Have you heard the theory though about the wasps and figs? Yeah, <laughs> it's the weirdest <laughs> thing. It's Tell the... me about the wasps. It's, okay, basically, Wasps, I don't know why, maybe okay. um, it's to lay eggs or something, they go into a fig yeah. and as the fig ripens it actually kills the wasp. So a lot of, I'm ruining figs for you, I'm so sorry, a lot of figs have wasp carcasses in there but they're like disin, they're, they're nothing, <laughs> they go down to nothing because of the fruit like eats the wasp. But someone told me this, they commented on a video, I was eating a fig and they were like, just so you know, like, I had no idea. I hope it hasn't put you off. To be honest, I love them so much. I'm going to try and blank that out. Yeah, okay, ignore it. Then I think ignore it. <laughs> I'll blank out the fig bits. Yes, yeah, figs are strange. Really, it, but, that is a really yeah. weird fact. But I'm going to go and look that up now. Yeah, the minute yeah, I get yeah, home. Um, but yeah, they're a source of calcium. calcium. So figs, dark leafy greens, um, even yeah. some dried fruit are a good source. But really? also iron. Okay. Iron that, is another yeah. one. Mm -hmm. If you are predisposed to being anemic anyway. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so do you family. take supplements for your uh, Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I had to even before I was vegan because yeah. um, it seems to be all of the females in my family mm -hmm. are bordering on anemic. So we yeah. just have naturally very low iron levels. So yeah. we've always taken iron supplements anyway. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as I started eating a vegan diet, I had to become even more conscious Aware. of it. Especially eating dark leafy greens, like you say. And if you don't have it with vitamin C. So you aid the absorption um, of iron if you pair your iron supplement with vitamin C or the iron you're eating. Oh, so, so like yeah. a glass of orange juice or something. You've you got it, you've got it. Right. Yeah, 100%. So even add some berries to a dish or something. Mm -hmm. Dried apricots are a good source of iron. I they love can dried apricots, I know, they're I amazing. Know. Especially when you soak them and then they kind of puff oh, up. They're delicious. Rehydrated I, I dip them in um, almond butter sometimes. Oh, really yum. good, yeah. You can get amazing vegan chocolate now as well, like incredible vegan chocolate that's mm. so good when you melt it down and just put like dried fruit oh, and dipped it in the freezer. Oh, yum. Off topic slightly. Yeah. <laughs> Going off on like um, chocolate and food and So all. to recap, we've got vitamin D, yeah, calcium, yeah, iron. iron. Now one component that's 
very tricky that I think there's going to be a lot more awareness about very soon is iodine. Oh, okay. Mm. Right. I have heard bits and bobs about this. Yes, so. it will be very spoken of, I think, yeah. in the vegan community. Yeah. And it's because iodine, first of all, is the component that affects your thyroid gland. Right. And it also aids your cognition, so your brain neural development. Right. So it's extremely important for youngsters especially. Mm. So because you've made the switch to being a plant-based eater in your adult life, yeah. you've already had that period of growth from having iodine from dairy and fish, which is where it comes from initially. Right. You can only get it from seaweed and iodinized salt. Right. So a lot of brands now are starting to add iodinized salt and fortify the products. Um, I think a few quite well-known nut melts are now going to be adding iodine to it. So Really? Yeah. You, by using the seaweed and the salt in the Potentially, milk? Potentially, wow, yeah. Wow, interesting. Because they, we, we're trying to find out ways. And of course yeah. you can supplement with these things, but I should also add never go and supplement without seeing a health professional first because really you can get toxicity so if let's say your diet's very high in vitamin a and a supplement you buy just happens to have an extract of a bit of vitamin a in it yeah you could very easily go and have too much, too much. which can cause wow. harm so it's all it's a bit controversial so, yeah it's so <laughs> interesting because we have so many health food stores even on the high street where mm. you can just go in and it's really convenient because you can get all of these amazing yeah. supplements that you yeah. might need but then you can get a bit carried away and be like, oh, well, if I'm getting that one, I might as well get that one. Just buy one, get one free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I think so the more true. you can get from your diet, the better. And yeah. one thing you can get is omega-3. And yeah. there's actually very good algae supplements that provide, so basically fish eat yeah. the algae in the ocean, which is where they get the DHA component of omega-3. Really? So omega-3 is made up of EPA and DHA, two different components yeah. that you'll see on um, animal-based supplements for omega-3, called liver right. oil. But... The DHA is the bit that's really kind of the crucial bit. And mm -hmm. the problem with vegetarian sources like avocado, seeds, that kind of stuff. Yeah. I don't want to give too many sciencey words, but it contains something called alpha linoleic acid. So you'll see ALA. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've heard of that. Yeah. I haven't heard of the but, yeah, yeah. alpha <laughs> linoleic <laughs> thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fine. I've that's, heard of ALA, yeah. You could all forget about that term. But <laughs> ALA takes 10 times longer to convert into that EPA DHA you need in your right. body. Okay. So you'd need to eat so much of it to get that amount. So it's much better that you probably supplement with a DHA yeah, yeah. kind of thing, an algae supplement, mm -hmm. or you make sure you've got a lot of that frequently in your diet. Yeah. Lots of nuts and seeds. So do you think if you are eating a plant-based diet, you need to be supplementing more because it is harder to get it from your diet compared to an average person that eats an average diet? I think it's portion sizes are a good point to raise there. So you may not have to supplement, but obviously you will because you've always been anemic, and I know yeah, now that right. you're predisposed to iron deficiency, so chances are there may be some other areas that might need a little bit of topping up. But it's yeah. very hard to say without seeing yeah, you in a clinic yeah. for an hour. But I think for lots of people out there, your vegan plate should be bigger than the plate it was before. The quantity of veg you need is so much more to yeah. satisfy you and get the nutrients. Yeah, totally. That's, That's something things. that I, I learned about two or three months into yeah. eating that way. I lost weight and I, my purpose of going yeah. vegan was never to lose no. weight. Um, because I've never even thought no. about it, but I, I was suddenly like, oh, I've lost weight, like, what do I do? And yeah. that was literally the portion sizes, mm -hmm. so I had to increase it, which was actually a really great thing. I was I like, know. oh my God, I can, like, <laughs> double my portions, yeah, this yeah. is brilliant. It's so interesting you say that, and I think I wrote a um, plant-based ebook in January, yes, and I, I did that. that because I think people just needed to understand all these key nutrient areas. Of course, B12 people generally know about. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's really like spoken. the number one thing you think about that you can't have on a vegan B12 diet. B12 and protein people always ask mm. about but they forget about those other nutrients we just described mm. and how to build a balanced vegan plate so you're a big fan of pulses and lentils and things like that yeah they're so good lentils good source of iron oh yes mm. yes yeah i didn't know that one actually yeah iron and protein yeah they're really good so you just want your carbs you want your veggies you want your protein and your healthy fats yeah. so you mentioned protein i'd love yeah. to speak a bit more about that okay what do you think is the best source of protein on a vegan diet? Is there one? Okay. <laughs> um, no, there are. There okay. are. Um, the complete source of amino acids. So protein is made up of building blocks called amino acids. Mm -hmm. And you want to make a complete form. Yeah. The problem with vegetarian or vegan proteins is a lot of them don't have all those amino acids. So you have to pair them with something else that has what okay. the other doesn't. Yeah. Rice and beans, good example. Rice has what beans don't have beans have what rice doesn't have, put it together, boom, perfect, perfect profile. So for you though, I would say quinoa already has a complete profile. Yeah, yeah. Love a bit of quinoa. Tofu. Yes. Soy is controversial. 
Yeah, yeah. We spoke a little bit more about soy we in did. the video we just filmed yeah. for Rhiannon's channel where we made the yeah. tofu frittata and that was yeah. really interesting about tofu. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Maybe go check that one out. Um, yeah, but do. It's a very good form of complete amino acids, soybeans, all that kind of stuff. They would be my top two for vegan diets. Right. But also, if you're looking at kind of veggie sausages and things, a lot of the time you have to check the protein in the packs because they're not actually good sources of protein. Yes, yeah. I mean, I've mm. got a real thing now with vegan processed foods. I, mm. There's so much available, which is brilliant because when I first started eating this way, there was literally nothing. And you How made long ago was, was it? Like six and a half yeah. years ago or something. Yeah. Um, so it's amazing seeing the transition mm. and it's, it's more mainstream. Yeah. But it does mean that there's way more processed food available and it can be tempting because oh when goodness. you see it, it's vegan sausages, vegan burgers, ve oh my god, everything is vegan now, it's yeah. great. Yeah. But then you actually look at it and you think, it's no better than meat. Well, this than is meat the thing, yeah. and corn products, some of them are vegan, some of them are not. So yeah. you actually have to really look. I don't go for corn You at just all. don't do I'm it. I'm not a fan yeah. of corn, no. Interesting. Yeah, not it's fun. definitely not for everyone. No. That's why I think the tofu options, maybe tempeh is another good one. Yes, yeah, tempeh's brilliant. I love it. It's so good. It's yeah. like more earthy, isn't it? It's just yeah. harder to find. I'm waiting for the time it's like in a normal supermarket. I know. I think for now, the best thing to do, especially the more economical thing to do, is have tons of cans of chickpeas and pulses in your cupboard. Exactly. And just chuck yeah. it all in, big yeah. bean chilies and things. Well that's what I do at the moment. So instead of going for the corn to make say a chili, mm. corn carne, well without the yeah. carne, yeah. I, I would make <laughs> it like from nuts and so walnuts are great blended mm. with um, lentils and oh, things lovely. like that. Like you can make and mushrooms. Yeah. Blend it all like you can make that consistency. Mushrooms contain quite a bit of protein. It's an, it's an interesting vegetable, and that's oh, yeah. actually where corn is derived from. So mycoprotein is from mushrooms. Oh wow, I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, so mushrooms are a good veg to add. In fact, most vegetables contain protein. Mm. It's just the amino acids, like we mentioned before, they're not complete and they're very small quantities in vegetables. Right. Yeah. So that's the kind of stuff with protein you want to go for. Interesting. Okay. I'm Learning so much, <laughs> this is so amazing. Good. Um, and then another thing is obviously fats. You have to be conscious of like getting those healthy fats, like things like yeah. chia seeds, what do you think of those? Yes, so chia seeds, another example, a lot of people would hail them as a good protein source. Mm -hmm. I actually refer to them more as a kind of healthy fat source. Yeah, that's what I would always say. Yeah, them as. so yeah. they have that ALA we discussed earlier. Ah, so the more the better, yeah. chuck it into your diet. Yeah. And also they're so versatile because they absorb 10 times their weight in water. Yeah. And they do contain protein, it's just you have to have so many chia seeds yeah. <laughs> to get a portion of protein. Right, right? okay. Like, There's only so many you can eat. Like. There are. And actually they're a nightmare when you're washing them. You know when you're washing they, up? Yes, because they gel up, don't they? So they get stuck on, on everything. Yeah. yeah, they drive me crazy or you get them in your teeth. Yeah. But they're so versatile. I love a chia seed pudding. Me too. Oh, so amazing. maybe porridge is a really good example for vegans for breakfast that actually contains a lot of protein because oats contain some protein as well. Yeah. Then you could add a mixed chia seeds in chia with the oats. Yes, yeah, so it's or hard protein powder as well. I do that actually with um, mm. my chia seed pudding. So Lovely. I'll make a protein shake and then use that liquid to yeah. make a chia seed pudding. It's delicious. I think Naomi's nailing the diet. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> learning so much. Six years you? down, you're doing really yeah. well. Oh, good. And uh, I wanted to ask also about, there's, I think there's a very fine line between healthy eating and then taking it a bit too far. Yes. This um, is something that I'm sure you have come across mm. um, in clinics and everything. How do you find that balance between eating really well but not crossing that line? Um, it's it's a really important topic to raise. So the areas that I've kind of studied and delved into, so I have my undergrad degree, my three-year degree, and then my master's degree, but I'm also a master practitioner in eating disorders and psychological interventions to eating. Wow. So actually, if you're looking at the thought processes behind why we eat what we eat, yeah. it's fascinating. And unfortunately, we have seen a huge rise in a term called clean eating at one point, mm -hmm. and vegan diets sometimes used in the wrong way. So mm. I see it a lot to mark mask an underlying form of disordered eating. Right. A lot of recovery from eating disorder patients, particularly the anorexic subtype. So with eating disorders, you can't really categorize one person as one thing. Everyone's unique, there, there yeah. are different spectrums. But a lot of people to recover would say, oh, I'm going to go vegan because it naturally restricts their intake. And of course, that's not what it's about. Mm. It's, it, it's, there's so much more to it. There's ethical, sustainable reasons, yeah, yeah. enjoyment, if that's just your thing, that's how you choose like a to live. It's a change. lifestyle, yeah. it's not a diet. So I think just be very, very careful and striking a balance, you've got to think of these three things. First of all, is it getting in the way of your social life, the mm -hmm. food choices you're making? Second, are you constantly preoccupied with your shape or your weight or your size? Mm -hmm. And then the final thing is, is all you can think about 24-7 
food. Mm. Because those three things are the kind of criteria that I would really look for in my clients to see, do they have a healthy balance? Interesting. And mm. so if someone is thinking, okay, yeah, I actually do have all those three things and maybe that is the reason I ate a vegan diet, what would your advice be to someone? I think definitely seek out help yeah. um, because the vegan diet may be right for you but maybe not right now. It yeah. could still be an option to go to or it might be right, it's just that you need to work on the psychological side of things to allow you flexibility to try new foods. So yes. yeah. Seek your GP is your first point of call. They'll refer you to different health services on the HS. Of course, there's lots of private areas, yeah. charities like Beat Online or at retrition.com, my website. We've got health professionals that specialise in these areas. So yeah. Definitely ask for Amazing. help. Yeah, yeah. Ask for help. Don't <laughs> yeah. shut it up. No, no definitely. No. It's an interesting one because with the plant based way of eating, you do look online. And when I'm trying to find recipes, whatever, mm. and I love researching into mm. this way of eating, this lifestyle, yeah. you do come across very extreme versions of it. And it is a diet. So it's like, right, cut out all fats <gasps> and eat all carbs. Or it's like, cut out all carbs. Mm. And, and that really confuses things and makes it so complicated. I always try to eat a very balanced diet. So and all food groups, all never food cut groups. out food groups. Definitely, Especially yeah. fats and things. I mean, well, all of them. So fats contribute to your hormones. Yeah. So they're the building blocks of hormones alongside proteins, especially for a female. Another key sign is amenorrhea, so absence of a period for, let's say, longer than six to nine months. Um, wow. Which does happen when I body... Mean, that's yeah. a warning sign that something's it wrong, is. isn't it? So on my podcast series, Food for Thought, I had a gynecologist come in and she actually openly spoke about the rise she's seen in people coming to her without periods, worrying about the fertility, who'd actually gone vegan. Mm. And it's because they just weren't doing it in a kind of way that suited their body. Maybe they weren't eating the volume of food, they cut out yeah. food groups. Yes, yeah. You can't not have carbs if you're a vegan. No, I mean, yeah, no. I, I, yeah. The, I mean, it is more that I've seen a lot of people cutting out all fats altogether, mm. um, and that's whether they're on a vegan diet or not. Um, and that just, for me, screams but, alarm bells. Do you know, you can't absorb some vitamins. So vitamins A, D, E, and K are fat soluble. Mm. You can't physically absorb them from food without the addition of fats. If you're not cooking yeah. with oil and you're cooking carrots, you're yeah. never going to get the vitamin yeah. A. I've actually, so yeah. this is where I do feel like social media in terms of health and well-being and food can become a little bit dangerous and you just have to be aware of it. Mm -hmm. and I'm not saying don't consume that content, no, no. Be able to, just be conscious of it. Because yeah. I have seen people online that have been cooking their foods with um, just water instead of oil. <laughs> so I've seen people that have even been eating a little bit of avocado and said that that's a treat and I, it just seems very, very extreme. So I think it is really good to be talking about this mm. because it's good to put that message out there to just people to be very aware that if you are changing up the way you eat, to just make sure it's very balanced. Like I wonder where it comes from, this, because the drive behind it is interesting for me. I think, why? Why give up the fats? And I mean, is it a weight loss angle? Because it's not healthy. And No, it seems really old fashioned, because I yeah. remember like years ago when fat was like the demon and it's yeah. like, cut out all fats because that makes you fat. It's like, I used no. to buy into that so much. Really? I used to buy all the low fat products when oh, I was a no, teenager. Yeah. Oh. It, you're better off actually buying the full fat yes. version. Well, just the real versions yeah. rather than yeah. things that have been extracted. And Yeah, yeah. 100%. No, I, I think you're right. It's all about making sure that you're eating the right amount of fats and protein and carbs to make that perfect plate. Precisely, and that's why it's good you're talking out about it. I mean, I'm so pleased that we actually have people in a position of influence that want to speak about the fact that n nutrition for me as a nutritionist, it's not just about what you eat, it's about why and how and the enjoyment of food. It, it's yeah. a science essentially, it it's, shouldn't be oversimplified or overcomplicated. It's, it's very unique to each individual and oh, I, I love it, but I think it can go very far in the wrong direction. Yeah, definitely. And from your experience, have you found that social media can play a part in all of that? Huge. So yeah. when I started my clinic, I didn't have Instagram. And it was just kind of coming around. Mm. And I now get parents referring me um, their children from their boarding schools because the boarding school has found a social media account that is quite dangerous. So we get referrals wow. like that now coming. Obviously my clinic is a private practice. So yeah. um, I used to do NHS and now we're in private practice, but a huge rise. I think body image, self-esteem and trying to copy what others do. So people saying, Absolutely. I eat this, it's gonna work for you. That's very dangerous. You've got to think what works for your body because everyone yeah. is different. So what works yes. for one person works for your friend. Yeah might not necessarily work for you. Yeah, so just because Naomi made a, and I made a frittata doesn't mean that that's going to be great for everyone. Like, yeah. 
yeah, you don't have to make a frittata. <laughs> <laughs> Although I can't wait to eat it. <laughs> but yeah, it, everyone yeah. is so unique. And anecdotes, what we call anecdotal advice, so the whole what works for me will work for you thing, is just not what I call evidence-based. Mm, and yeah. until we can make a judgment on something, you need tons and tons of research on something. Totally. So, yeah. Amazing. Oh, you're, you're really inspirational. Everything you've said, you're really impressive with Thanks. your whole knowledge. It's so great well, to I'm chat with you. I'm still learning. You're Believe still learning. me. I, I don't know how you can learn always, anymore. You know, I'm doing pre and postnatal now and I love oh, really? it. Really? Wow. Yeah, so maybe one day in the future we'll do that. Yeah, we'll be sitting here to we'll about that with big bumps. <laughs> thank you for having Amazing. me. No, thank you so much. I hope you guys have all found that really, really interesting. Do feel free to comment down below. We'll get back to you. And thank you. Make sure to check out the frittata as well on Rhiannon's YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.